Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. What I have here with me is Antex CX300 RGB Elite Mid Tower Case and I noticed there's not a single video of this on YouTube. So I'm going to unbox this bad boy and we're going to look at how this feels and performs. All of that coming up. All right, so Antec seem to be selling this case in specific markets and it is unclear from their website in what countries this case is actually available. Check your uh, local retailers to see if this case is available in your region. All right, so let me tell you what I was thinking before I got this case, right? I wanted an all dark build since, I mean, I was bored of looking at RGBs. But this is a fish tank design, so I am planning custom white LED lighting inside the case to kind of highlight the dark mode for a fresh and unique look. But this is a, a project for later this year, uh, probably December. I also wanted to get rid of the case fans because mostly the case fans are junk and I wanted to replace them with better fans. So I went for the Arctic P12's PWM fans to handle airflow in the case, but more on that later. So with that as like the base requirement, uh, I started looking for the most budget friendly cases around and found this Antec CX300. Uh, it seems to be a budget variant of the globally available Constellation series, uh, specifically the C3 case. Now this case retails for about $55 or 4600 Indian rupees. However, I got this in the ongoing sale on Amazon and picked this up for a bargain price of $45, which is 37.80 Indian rupees. And this is actually quite a good deal. So the case is 456 mm tall to 19 mm wide and 450 mm deep. If that matters to you, it's a mid tower case. So there's tempered glass on the side and front. And it's great to see at this price point since most budget cases usually have an acrylic uh, kind of plasticky looking panel on the front uh, but this has an, a tempered glass so that's always good to see according to antec the glass is 4 mm thick i don't have any tools to measure that but if that matters to you that information is on their website on the top there are two usb 2.0s and one usb 3.0 uh, there's a headphone and mic jack and there's a mouse click type uh, power and reset button So if you do plan to get an ARGB controller, yes, this this case doesn't come with an ARGB or a PWM controller So if you do plan to get one, I suppose you can use the uh, reset cable to manage the lighting inside the case So there's a magnetic dust filter on the top and a holder type dust filter at the bottom That's where the PSU is so the top of the case can fit three 120mm fans or two 140mm fans. Uh, it supports a 360mm radiator. However, if you install a 360 radiator, Antec says the max memory height is limited to 45mm. A 240mm radiator can be fitted on the side. The tempered glass is held by a single captive thumb screw at the top and the panel sticks to the main case with these two magnets. Now what is awesome is that the tempered glass panel slots into the groove in the case at the bottom and this holds the tempered glass in place. Now, this is actually an awesome safety measure and avoids accidental slipping and breaking of the glass. So kudos to Antec uh, for this thoughtful design choice. The case supports a maximum of 80x size motherboards and has 7 PCI slots. Uh, you can fit in a micro 80x motherboard like I have here and also an ITX if you want to do that for some reason. So the case supports a maximum PSU length of 245mm with cables and the space is quite large as you can see. On the PSU shroud it can take uh, two 120mm fans. You can also fit another 120mm fan on the hard disk shroud here on the side if there is no SSD on top. So this makes a total of 10 120 mm fans that you can install in the case if you wish to convert this into a hovercraft. The case comes with uh, four 120 mm fixed mode RGB fans which are daisy chained into this Molex type of connector that plugs into your 
that into your PSU. Now, I'm going to replace these with the Arctic P2Ls anyway, so that's not a problem for me. But if you are looking for PWM case fans, then I have some alternatives for you at the end. All right, so the max CPU cooler height is up to 170 mm. In my case, I'm going to be using an Arctic Freezer 36, which is perfectly supported, so I'm, I'm okay with that. The maximum GPU length is 420mm. Now I have a massive ROG Strix 36 TTI and that should fit in perfectly inside this case. So the back side is held by two captive thumb screws. There's plenty of space here for decent cable management and grommets for zip tying cables into place. According to Antec, this is 27mm of space if those uh, dimensions matter to you. There are two caddies for SSDs uh, which need to be removed with a Phillips screwdriver. The included screws also have a large radiator fan screw which is great for fastening a fan on the PSU shroud. Now inside the PSU shroud itself there are rubber pads to remove any vibration from the PSU fan. Again small things that are great to see at this price point. Alright so let me transfer my existing build into this new case and I'll see you on the other side. Alright, so this is my completed build and this is how my all black build looks like. I got rid of the RGB fans like I said uh, that come with the case and I installed four Arctic P2Ls which I think look great for this type of build. So this is a fully air-cooled PC running a Ryzen 5 5600X and an ROG Strix 3060 Ti. Okay, so let's talk about temperatures. On idle as you can see the CPU is currently idling at around 60 degrees it moves between 57 to 60 so that's good uh, the case fans are currently running at 1500 rpm the cpu fan is about 1300 rpm these can go up to 1800 so this is fine and moving down we are able to see that uh, the gpu temperature is around 40 degrees with a hot spot at around 52 which is pretty good for idle let me fire up battlefield and then let's look at temperatures on that. Alright, so when I fire up Battlefield, you can see the, the CPU is at 72 degrees, about 90-95% usage. And the GPU is about almost 100% usage. And it's currently hovering around 55-56 degrees centigrade. Let me move ahead in the timeline to about uh, 10 or 15 minutes. And then let's look at temperatures. Okay, so now the CPU is about 76 degrees, the GPU is still about 57, which is, which is quite good. Uh, moving ahead, I'm seeing that the CPU has gone up to 78 degrees, but the GPU is still about 57. Now, if you're seeing the usage, the GPU is actually at 97, 98% usage, which is quite good. So the case fans are doing a great job of uh, moving air into the into the case and exhausting hot air. The temperature is being maintained in the case. Okay, so in my honest opinion, the case simply does what it advertises. The good stuff includes decent build quality and uh, nice design choices such as the hook for the tempered glass to hold it in place. That's That's a good design choice. I think the pricing is also okay. Coming to the bad stuff, you know, when I was building it, I noticed the dust filter is missing on the intake side, which is actually a bummer. It's like that friend who sometimes forgets to zip their trousers, you know. So I'll have to like find a solution to this now, uh, because I don't want dust entering my case. Anyway, since I wanted a full black build and was looking for the cheapest possible fish tank type of case, it cost me $45 for the case and about $34 for the Arctic P12 pack of 5 fans, uh, which brings the total up to $79 or 6,600 Indian rupees. Now at the same budget range, there are other cases you can look at. One is the Montec Air 903 Max. This supports an E80X motherboard comes with uh, four 140mm fans and has a built-in ARGB and PWM controller. is is an excellent case. You will find a lot of positive reviews on anyone who's done a case review on YouTube. This is a highly recommended case. 
and the other one that you can look at is the Fantech XT Pro Ultra Max Super Duper Large Mid Tower case. So I don't know what's with the naming, but that's a pretty good case as well. And then the third case is the Montec Sky 2 ARGB. This also has a built-in ARGB and PWM controller. A slightly higher budget, but uh, I think in your region, they should probably be lower than what we are seeing on the screen here. So I didn't go for any of these because I was going to upgrade the case fans anyway. So it didn't make sense to go for these and then change the fans. But if you think that these are good for your use case, then you can look at these. And I'm pretty sure there are other uh, reviewers out there who might recommend other cases in this budget range. All right. So let me know what you think about this case. And I'd like to know based on your region if this case is actually available so let me know what you think about this review this is the second review i've done on this channel so if you want to hear more from me on the components i purchase and if you want to hear my reviews on those i'm more than happy to share my thoughts so leave your uh, thoughts in the comments um, and uh, i'll do my best to answer the questions uh, that you may have about this case so thanks for watching see you next time